Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for inviting me here again. And uh, I probably wouldn't have ran for the European Parliament if it wasn't for people like uh, Jeremy O'Flynn encouraging me, and people like Michael Fitzmaurice, who's now a member of Dáil Air, and hopefully it will turn out to be a good decision. And um, what I'm going to put out to you here, I put out to 972,000 people during the European election and 124,000 of them came back and said yes, some of them didn't turn up, but uh, I'm a member of the European Parliament as a result of it. I'm in favour of Ireland being part of a European community, one similar to what we joined in 1973, a block of nations looking to enhance their ability to trade with each other. However, we are no longer a community, we are a member of a union, one which took the side of the bondholders and left us with a bill of, well, depending on how you listen to, in and around 70 billion euros. We need the EU to go back to being a community which puts people before bankers. That's not a slogan, that's what it's got to do. One which foots the bill for the calamitous mistake that the project of monetary union has been. A community which treats small nations equally. That doesn't happen at the moment. We need to build a coalition of peoples from across Europe who see through the Eurozone project for what it is. And I would love to hear the opinions of the people at the table tonight about what's the future of the Euro. Is it full fiscal union or what is it? But as far as I can see, it's the only way it will work, but I'm not prepared to give up this country for full fiscal union. The European project was meant to benefit people when it came to dealing with unemployment. We were told during the debate on the Lisbon Treaty that a yes vote would create jobs. Well, the opposite is the case. Youth unemployment is now at an all-time high across Europe. People are leaving the country in their droves. The promise of a more integrated Europe bringing more jobs has proven to be a fallacy. Now, one of the big downsides, as far as I can see, with being in the European Union in its current state is all the red tape. By the end of 2013, the EU had introduced 8,937 regulations, along with 1,953 directives. The farmer community has been severely restricted in how they can use their land, even to the point of digging a drain or putting up a fence. If they resist these rules, they're threatened with financial penalties. If they, followed up their, if they follow up, they are crippled with environmental consultants' fees. Since Ireland joined up with Europe in 1973, the number of farmers under the age of 35 has gone down from 29% to 6%. There are now more farmers over the age of 80 than under 35. Anyone who thinks this is a success, well, they want to think again. Turf cutters, and I do talk about other things, they have been restricted as well in centuries old practices. Now, while that wasn't all Europe's fault, when we went over there with a solution, they said they'd help us, but it was a case of the computer says no. They couldn't go in reverse gear, even though they admitted it was wrong. Now, if you drive up the wrong road, and you know you went up the wrong road, and there's someone there saying, sorry, you can't go back because the computer says no, well, you've got to do something about it. We constantly hear how the EU has been of financial benefit to Ireland. The evidence does not exist to back this up. And no matter how many times it's said, it's followed up with, look at all the money we got. Eurofiles tell us how we have gained massively through co cohesion funds and the common agricultural policy. In total, we have received 72 million and given out 31 million in rebates. We've also contributed fish stocks to the value of, depending on who you listen to, in and around 200 billion euros, while only receiving 17 billion in return. Including the bank debt, we are looking at 46,000 euro for every man, woman and child. And when we talk about the common agricultural policy, who gets that money? Larry Goodman and his buddies get that money, not the ordinary farmer. And that's the way it is. Finally, opinion polls show that trust in the EU is spiralling downwards. In an attempt to reverse this trend, the public are now being treated to brainwashing through, well, what's called the Blue Star program running in our schools. I was invited to raise that lovely flag at one of my local schools lately. I refused. It's an abomination. It's not about fairness. It does our kids no good. The European People's Party's election manifesto, of which Fine Gael, I remember, says we need to educate, we need education in the schools.
schools around Europe. Such education will be used to counteract ignorance. You see, if you don't agree with the EU, you're thick and you're stupid. We're ignorant. And growing, it's to get rid of growing Euroscepticism. Now, if the EU was of such benefit to Ireland, why do we need to go into our classrooms and brainwash our kids and tell them we'd still be living in caves if we didn't join this union? I'll finish by saying this. If it's fair, can you tell me why the guy who's at the head of it said this? I'm ready to be insulted as being insufficiently democratic, but I want to be serious. I am for secret, dark debates. Well, all I can say is, my children ain't going to be brought up in that new super state, and we've got to bring it down. Marcus Howard, test one, two, three.